Hey everybody, it's Sean here and Misha, who is giving himself a bath in the background. Great timing, buddy. Uh, we are presenting a, another Power BI tips and tricks video. As anybody who works in Power BI on a regular basis knows, we don't just work in data or data viz or uh, data storytelling. We also work heavily in real estate. As anybody knows uh, who works in Power BI on a regular basis, it can really be challenging to figure out, you know, ways to fit all of your data visuals and text and buttons, uh, you know, all, all onto one Power BI screen without making everything look super cluttered and busy. So I'm going to show you a trick that I use sometimes when you want to be able to give the user the ability to turn on commentary and then get rid of it uh, when they don't need it. So obviously, like a lot of my solutions, this trick does involve PowerPoint, so I'm going to be swapping back and forth between PowerPoint and Power BI, but let's go ahead and get to it. I'm really excited to show you this trick. So as you can see, I've already got my Power BI report built. This Power BI report is literally just kind of a rundown of my music streaming listening habits uh, from 2019 to 2021, so roughly about a three-year period. And you know you can see in the Power BI report the total number of minutes that I've spent listening to music. It's a lot uh, because I'm typically listening to music almost all day while I build Power BI reports. You can see the number of artists I've listened to, the number of albums, and the number of songs. There's a heat map down here sort of showing, you know, when during the week I tend to listen to the most music, which is, it looks like, you know, usually around lunchtime, you know, into the early afternoon, which I think that pretty well tracks with when I'm doing most of my development work. And then there's also some bookmarks, you know, over in this section that allow you to toggle back and forth between my top artists, my top albums, and the top songs that I listen to. And of course, there's a bunch of filters over here. But, you know, the challenge for this video is what if we want to give the user the ability to see some additional commentary about like what's going on here or even about like one section like this middle section here and be able to turn on and off that commentary, you know, really easily so that, you know, when by default, the user is pretty much just looking at the core visuals here. They're not seeing a bunch of text, you know, uh, sort of cluttering up the screen. So there is a solution that I use all the time. And it combines Power BI and PowerPoint, which I'm sure that nobody who knows me is very surprised about. A lot of my great Power BI solutions uh, sort of uh, come out of marrying Power BI and PowerPoint. And this is exactly such a solution. So let me go ahead and before I head over to PowerPoint, I'm going to pull up my snipping tool on my other monitor. And I'm going to hit New. And I'm just going to quickly you know, grab a rough screenshot of my Power BI report. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know, just enough that you uh, manage to grab uh, everything that's on your Power BI canvas. And that screenshot is just gonna serve as a guide. And I'll show you what I mean by that here in just a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to PowerPoint. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the screenshot that I just took, drop it into place. You can see that it fits the PowerPoint slide almost perfectly, and that is because, again, a PowerPoint slide by default is almost exactly uh, the same uh, dimensions as a uh, default Power BI canvas. So they're kind of made to fit perfectly with each other. And I'm going to put this into the background of my PowerPoint uh, slide that I'm doing here, literally just as a reference so that I know in Power BI where everything is located. So once I've got that into place to sort of serve as my, uh, as my guide in the background, I'm going to just grab a rectangle, drag it into place. You can cover everything up. doesn't matter. And I'm just going to make this a very dark gray. I'm going to remove the outline. And under Shape Fill in my ribbon up here, I'm going to go to More Fill Colors. And I'm going to up my transparency to just about 10%, literally just enough to where my report is just barely poking through so that users can, you know, see the see as much of the report as possible without it being, you know, overbearing. Because we don't want this to distract uh, at all uh, from the commentary that we're going to be putting on this. So next, I'm going to go and grab one more rectangle. And I'm just going to, you know, sort of position this over the visuals that I'm going to be providing commentary for. So I'm just going to drop it there. You can make the shape white if you want to. I don't think it really makes any difference, but for me it sort of you know helps mentally. And I'm going to first click on my dark gray transparent background, and then I'm going to click control click on the white rectangle, and that will allow me to merge these shapes 
And in this instance, what I want to do is I want to remove the white rectangle from the dark gray semi-transparent rectangle. So I'm going to subtract it. And you're already getting the effect that we're going to be carrying over into Power BI. And that is we're going to sort of highlight just the visuals that we're going to be providing commentary for. So it's just a little bit of trickery of the eye. And so ultimately, this uh, dark gray re rectangle that has a big chunk taken out of it is what I'm going to be bringing into Power BI. So I'm just going to right click, save that as a picture. I'm going to call it dark gray overlay. And I'm going to go ahead and leave PowerPoint behind. Next, I'm going to go to my insert ribbon in Power BI. I'm going to add an image and grab that dark gray overlay. You can see there it is. It's got the big square taken out of the middle of it. I'm going to go to my style options, set my scaling to fit. And next, I'm just going to sort of drag this into place. There you go. You can see that there's just a little bit of my report sort of poking through in the, on the boundary. I think that's personally fine. In fact, you know, I actually think that this looks aesthetically pretty good. It sort of frames everything. Okay, so now I've got my, uh, my overlay in place and you can still see the images or, or the data visuals that I'm highlighting. Uh, they're standing out just fine. On another page, I went ahead and just drew up some quick commentary so that you didn't have to watch me, you know, typing a bunch of stuff. I'm going to go ahead and grab that and I'm going to paste it into place and put that right here. You can see that I've used color and bolding to sort of, you know, call out uh, some of the, you know, major highlights of this text if you're in, a, in too much of a hurry to read. And I'm also going to go back over here and you can see I just made a bunch of bar charts that sort of capture the top five artists that I've listened to, top five albums and top five songs. Literally everything's just based on the number of minutes that I've spent listening to them. I'm going to head back over here and just drag these into place. You can see a little bit of the report in the background sort of poking through, but, you know, nothing that's too obstructive for me to, to read this stuff. And, you know, since I've got three bar charts here, you can see that they're not quite lined up on the sides, and there's a little bit more spacing here than here. So I'm just going to go to Format real fast, go to my Align Options. I'm going to Align Left and distribute those vertically so that it's super clean. And I'm pretty happy with how that looks. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to go to my for, go to my view options in my ribbon and I need to turn on my bookmarks pane and my selection pane. Because now what we need to do is we need to create uh, the bookmarks that are going to allow the user to turn on and off this commentary. So I'm going to add two new bookmarks. I'm going to call this first one commentary on and I'm going to call the next one commentary off. And this is an extremely important step that we need to take, very similar to um, the selected visuals uh, video that I posted a little while back. So you're going to go to both of these, and you're going to turn off data, and you're going to turn on selected visuals. And the reason that we're doing that is you can see that I've already got some other bookmarks on this page toggling back and forth between my top artists, albums, and songs uh, bar charts. What I don't want to have happen is for this group of bookmarks to depend on this group of bookmarks and vice versa. I want to keep these two groups of bookmarks completely separate from each other. And so by turning on selected visuals, I'm going to set up these bookmarks to where the dark gray overlay, this text box, and these three bar charts are the only items that are being affected by these two bookmarks. So I'm going to go ahead and just literally control click on everything that makes up this first bookmark. And I'm going to go ahead and update that. And then I'm going to go back through and I'm going to turn those off. I'm going to select all of them because again, I need only the selected visuals. And I need to make sure everything that I want commentary off to apply to is selected here. So it's these five things. And I'm going to go ahead and update. And then I'm going to get, just make sure that they're working okay. Okay, so uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert another uh, uh, another button. And I'm just going to use the Q&A uh, button because, you know, honestly, it already looks like a comment box. It's going to work just fine here. So you can kind of put this into place wherever you want to. I'm just going to throw it right there. I'm going to update my style to make it pop a little bit more. I'm going to scroll down to Icon. And I'm going to change this to sort of white and put it right there. I don't want it to stand out too much. 
you know, just enough to maybe get, get the user's attention. If you want to add, you know, uh, something additional, like some text to the tooltip, like click here to see commentary on the visuals in this section. You can do that. And now I'm going to add an action to that button that will allow me to switch to my commentary on. I'm going to go ahead and test that out. And you can see it's working just great. And now the only thing that's left to do is to add one more button to all of this that's going to allow us to turn off the overlay. You can do this however you want. You can add a version, another version of this button to turn it off. Or if you're like me, maybe you just want to add an X in the top right corner, uh, which I feel like is typically how people exit out of things. So I'm just going to go to turn off my border, turn off my icon, I'm going to turn on text. I'm going to just write an X there. I'm going to make that white. I'm going to make it a lot larger than 10 point font so that people actually notice it. Not really happy with 30. I'll drop that down to 20. Perfect. Okay. And now, real quickly, because I did forget to do this, I am going to grab everything one more time and just going to update one second. going to update my on commentary and then on my off commentary I'm going to update that too so that my cancel button isn't still there okay now that I've got everything I'm going to go to my X button here I'm going to add an action to that to turn off my commentary and there we go so now we've got our buttons working. So if somebody comes here and they're interested, okay, I kind of want to know a little bit more about what's going on here. They can turn on commentary. Everything is nice and highlighted there, including some additional hidden insights. And if once they're done with it, they can just click out. And you know, if I'm on the top albums view, uh, all I've got to do is uh, just go back through here and hit commentary off, update albums, do the same with songs. Do the same with artists. And now the user can just, you know, toggle back and forth between these bookmarks. If they decide when, when they're on the top albums view that they want to go and suddenly look at the commentary, no problem. You can see very subtly in the background that I am still on top albums. When they're done with it, they can click out. When they go to top songs, same thing. You know, they can pull up the commentary anytime that they want to because these uh, two groups of bookmarks, uh, these and the commentary bookmarks, they're not related to each other because the uh, commentary sections are only using selected visuals. So there you have it. I hope you found that super useful. I hope that you're already thinking about ways that you can maybe use that on any upcoming Power BI projects that you have. As for me and probably Misha, we will be uh, so excited for you to join us for future tips and tricks videos in Power BI that we're going to be posting to YouTube. Can't wait to see you there.